So, in the Centurion video, I briefly mentioned the Legionary Mech. A well, Legionnaire, I guess. I don't know how to say this word. <laughs> it is similar to the uh, Snake, where, you know, it uses like a, like an existing mech, but they modified it to fit a different uh, purpose. Also, I, I gotta put a... I guess you put a disclaimer at the front, I guess. Is it a disclaimer? I don't know if the disclaimer is even the right word I'm looking for, but... Basically, there's a part of the lore which I... I personally didn't think makes sense or I or is, is that's just me not being able to read and comprehend things correctly so I'm gonna do some slight uh, th there's gonna be a one slight change to it it's nothing major it's just something that just just do just do just so that it works in my head that's it really it's just a small change it's not like a lore changing world changing change it's like something very very minor <laughs> I'll put it in the description, maybe like a pinned comment or something, so that uh, I, know, I explain myself there. Without further ado, let's go check out this weird looking hunchy bat boy with a very cool name. <laughs> the Legionnaire was originally conceived as a heavy counterpart to the Centurion, but its development was halted by the onset of the clan invasion. Despite its setback, Korean enterprises persisted in their efforts to create a formidable mech for the various sons. One of the prototype chassis showed promise prompting Korean to seek permission to continue its development as a light flanker. Work on the new mech proceeded clandestinely at the 44J2A facility in New Avalon, the capital of the Federated Suns. However, progress was interrupted by the word of Blake Jihad, which threatened to derail the project entirely. Determined to see it through, Korean engineers redoubled their efforts to complete the Legionnaire. Amidst the chaos of the invasion, four prototype Legionnaires were hastily deployed to defend the River Thames, against the 44th Shadow Division. Now, I don't think this is the exact same River Thames as in London. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe they dug it up and put it there. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, the uh, four prototypes of the Legionnaire fought valiantly to defend New Avalon. Amidst the chaos, one of the prototypes was successfully smuggled off-world to the planet Augusta, where mass production began immediately. Christopher Thompson, the CEO of Korean Enterprises at that time, also provided Archana Bellamex with the schematics of the Legionnaire to aid in its production efforts. Tragically, however, one of the prototypes was destroyed by Blake Estoyama during the word of Blake's scorched earth retreat from the planet. However, the remaining two prototypes endured and underwent a complete rebuild, ensuring their continued readiness for battle. The Legionnaire is a 50 ton medium mech. It is constructed upon the 2A Type 15 endless steel chassis, designed for ease of manufacture to facilitate rapid production. This feature is reflected in tabletop gameplay with the easy to maintain quirk. However, this design choice inadvertently leaves the weapon linkage exposed, a flaw that is still a thing in subsequent models. They didn't fix it, they just left it the way it is. <laughs> the mech is centered around a single weapon system. But to enhance its effectiveness beyond its limitation, the factory specification includes the Reginald Systems TCA targeting system, renowned for its exceptional accuracy, particularly at medium ranges. Powered by a Magna 350XL engine, the Legionnaire boasts an impressive top speed of 118 km per hour. Its armor consists of 10 tons of Stargard II standard armor, providing substantial protection on the battlefield. Communication is facilitated by the PC4X Blaster, well, the standard heatsink count is 10 double heatsinks. Looks wise, the Legionnaire deviates significantly from its namesake, the Centurion. It adopts a hunched posture with its head positioned at the front and center of the torso. This design choice has sparked debate. While some argue that placing the pilot in the most heavily armored section of the mech enhances survivability, others express concern about the lack of ejection mechanism and the proximity to three tons of ammunition. This being the case though, it's still like the mech still does not have like an ejection mechanism port, which is weird because it was specifically mentioned <laughs> that this mech does not have the builds to eject, but alright, whatever. In terms of gameplay though, like the cockpit is still located in the head section of the like the damage model. On most of them. There's one where the head the cockpit is actually in the torso. I'm gonna get to that when I get to that. So let's move on to the variants of this. Very weird looking thing, but it's charming actually, I kind of like it. <laughs> First, we have the prototype variant that they deployed during the new Avalon Siege. The LGN-1X was hastily deployed in 3068 during the World of Blake Siege on New Avalon. The mech comes with 10 tons of Star Shield 2 standard armor and 10 double heat sinks. 
can move out to a top speed of 118 km per hour and also comes with an active bagel probe to help fulfill the legionnaire's original designated role as a scout. However, the probe was removed in future models as it can cause the mech's operating system to crash due to incompatibility of the targeting system. It has a rotary AC2 with 45 shots as supposed to, it's, it's, it's supposed to be in the head, but for game purposes, it's actually it's located in the right torso. But again, I'm gonna get to that when I get to that. This, that I think that there's some issues with this map, this mech, I believe. But anyway, the uh, left torso houses the targeting computer and the aforementioned active uh, probe, bagel probe. There are two ER medium lasers that's located somewhere in the middle of the mech. I don't know exactly where they are in this picture, but they're, they're somewhere there, I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, this prototype costs about 10.7 million. Then we have the first production model, the LGN 2D. This variant was produced by Archerna Bellamax in the year 3073. It is largely the same as a prototype except for the emission of the problematic active probe. They are 2 mediums and 0.5 tons of armor, so we have 9.5 total. The Rotary AC2 has been replaced with a bigger Mydron model Rotary Cannon 5 with 60 shots. And this one costs 10.4 million. It's cheaper than the prototype. There's also another version of this called the 2X, but it's, it's literally the same. This is the version, the 2D. I guess that's built by Korean Enterprises. It's just the same. It's literally just the same. It's not, not, there's no difference about it. Well, on, on the game, there's no difference. But in universe, there are some differences. Like the HUD is different and the uh, some internal parts are different. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next one. We have the LGN 2XA variant, which was introduced two years later in uh, 3075. It is exactly the same as the D, but with another ton of our armor shaved off, so 8.5. And for his weapon, it has an Aero 4 launcher of 5 shots of normal missiles and 5 shots of Kobe missiles. Everything else again is the same as the uh, 2D. This one will cost you 10.6 million. Another sub variant of the 2D, the LGN 2XU, it shares itself another 2 tons of armor, so you got 6.5 tons of armor. But the armor is ferrofiber, so it's, I mean, it's, still, it's still weaker, I guess, but it's, it's, it's less, but it's not as weak i suppose <laughs> but anyway they they did this to make way for an ultra ac uh, 10 20 shots this one will cost you 10.5 million two years later in 3077 the lgn 2f was made this one was based off the lgn 2x1 muse fire custom we'll get to that later again this is uh largely the same as a 2d or 2x variant this one comes with 9.5 tons of reflective armor, which is just anti-energy armor, basically. It's susceptible to uh, non... Uh, what do you call that? Non-energy weapons. So, against energy weapons, it's better, but, you know, if you get hit by solids or whatever, it, yeah, it, 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 just, it just falls apart. The Mydra model uh, Rotary Cannon 5 is still there for 60 shots. A bright blue extended range melee laser is on each arm. The targeting computer is also removed, so this one doesn't have the uh, the uh, the the quirk. We got this one got rid of. In fact, this one's got its own quirks. So I'll get to that again when I get to it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, the cockpit of the 2F is finally re relocated to the center torso on the game damage model. So this is what I was uh, saying uh, earlier, where the the uh, cockpit is actually located in the middle of the torso, but uh, it still doesn't have like. It still doesn't have like no ejection quirk, even though again it, it was specifically mentioned that this thing could not eject. <laughs> I don't know why, but it, it's just this is it is it is what it is, I guess. Again, like I said just now, it, it does have a separate quirk list compared to the other models. It retains the uh, easy to maintain and exposed weapon quirk. The other new quirks are exposed actuators, poor ceiling, and stable. Mega Make hasn't updated this yet. Time to report this, please. <laughs> the 2F is popular among the Avion forces stationed near the Capellan border. As, as us Capellans, eh, we, right, we, we like our energy weapons. Eh? We don't need to worry about the uh, about the Kabooies. The 2F costs 12.1 million. And finally, we have the LGN 2K, introduced in the year 3128, way later. The armor is back to its original 10 tons of standard. Uh, the weapon has been replaced with an ERPPC and the target computer makes its return. But the thing is, the cockpit, at least in the game like diagram, is now back on the head. This is just a giant cluster. Cluster fluff. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna keep saying it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a point about this. I'm gonna talk about this at the end. 
Anyway, the 2K also comes with MASC. Uh, My Mirror Accelerate uh, Circuit. S S I keep forgetting the full name of this thing. <laughs> but whatever, I'll put it on screen. I guess what the full name. But I can boost the mech to a top speed of 151 kilometers when I activate it. That's pretty fast for a medium mech, really. Probably the fastest one. Is it? I don't know. This one costs 12.7 million. There's also like this export variant that switches out the RAC5 with an AC10. But that, that, that's the only information we have on it. It, it was all like it was briefly mentioned in like a dossier. Yeah, that's it really. That's it. It just switched it switched out the gun. That's it. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's go for the custom. That's uh, the one that I, I mentioned just now. The 2X1 Muse Fire. This variant was part of the Muse Fire project, which is a project to test new systems to see if they were viable for upgrading the uh, Legionnaire with. The Davions managed to buy at least two clan rotary AC5s and clan reflective armor. They used like these clan things that they bought to upgrade the uh, to, to, to upgrade this this mech, I guess. It's exactly the same as the 2F, or the 2F is exactly the same as this, I guess. Except, you know, the 2F uses inner sphere stuff while this one uses uh, clan stuff. Yeah, you, you got the clan rotary cannon on top and the armor is clan reflective. Other than that, it's basically the same. Fun fact though, this one, the, the image of this one, it does have a head. Some form of a head. But in in the TRO, it said that it's only like sensors. And it, it, that, that was like where the pilot sat before, apparently. Again, I'm going to talk about this in the end. But now there's only sensors up there. The pilot is sitting where it's supposed to be sitting, I guess, the middle of the cockpit. <laughs> oh my god, I want to talk about it so bad. <laughs> but anyway, according to uh, Mega Mech, this one costs about 11.9 million. And finally, we have the LGN 2D Raul Custom. Raul had the RAC5 remove the right arm and remove the target computer. In the free space, he installed three medium lasers, two on the torso and one on the head. Everything else is the same. According to Mega Mech, this one is 10.6 million. Alright, let's so move on to the pilots, and there's surprisingly a uh, handful bunch of them, considering how, like, obscure this thing is. <laughs> uh, let's, let's begin with uh, Knight Presenter Raul Ortega, the pilot of the custom I just mentioned. Raul, 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 one of those two, grew up, want, always wanted to become a mech warrior, but when the time came to prove he was ready, he failed. This got him relegated to a reservist position on his home planet, Archernar. Later, when it was invaded by clan forces, Raul took command of the remaining troops that were still active after the initial assault and managed to drive off the invaders. This got him promoted to Knight Errant. Later on, during the invasion of Terra, however, Raul was captured by Clan Jade Falcon during the defense of North Africa. Raul is actually like a novel character, so you, you, you can read more about him in the books that I don't have. <laughs> They probably describe how, how he looked like in the book, but the image you're gonna use, like the AI generated image you're gonna use, probably not gonna look anything like him. But that's how it was in the books. But anyway, next we have Lieutenant Lieutenant Robert Duchet, one of the original prototype pilots during the uh, Siege of New Avalon. His actions during the defense of the research facility, the uh, 44J2A, or whatever it's called, I forgot already. Uh, the Legionnaire was being developed in, earned him the uh, Sunburst Medal, which is like a Medal of Honor, basically. Then we have Private Davis Pendleton, another prototype pilot. Pendleton led an evacuation of civilians from a small lumber camp during the siege. During the evacuation, he had to engage a Blake Toyama mech, which he unfortunately lost to. So this is the guy that, you know, at the beginning I said that they lost the prototype. He was the pilot. His mech crashed, he, 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 his mech was destroyed because the bagel probe crashed his uh, operating system. And uh, yeah, it took him out. I don't know if he survived or not. It doesn't say anywhere. So, Rip Davis or he's still alive, who knows. <laughs> now we have Jacqueline Tadaka of the Dracrinus Combine, later Republic of Sphere. Tadaka had a poor upbringing which led her to a life of crime, where she joined the local Yakuza gang. There, she would work her way up until she was noticed and recruited into a ghost regiment. Uh, so a ghost regiment is, is, is kind of like a penal unit, kind of. You have like criminals and other unfortunate people, let's say. Just shoved into a unit and just order around to fight for the DCMS. 
But anyway, uh, after the blackout happened, she defected the Republic Sphere. For some reason. <laughs> don't know why she did it. Then we have Scott Trasic. Trasic? Trasic, I don't know how to say this. The second in command of the Day Vanguards. But apparently that's not even his real name, so... Yeah. <laughs> the Combine tried to recruit him as a spy, but they failed him every time. Uh, Scott is known to be a very, a very loyal Davion follower and has shown great care to his landsmates, defending them even in a situation when all hope is lost. And finally, we have Susan Motherhand Dramond of the uh, Nova Cats, an elite mech warrior who is known to put the lives of her subordinates of the mission, so similar to uh, Scott from just now. Often using defensive tactics against her enemies, she baits them around and winds them down while keeping her own casualties low. Using the legionary speed, or legionaires, I keep calling legionaries, legionaire. <laughs> legionary speed, she would be, she would constantly be moving to find better positions to cover her troops. This has earned her the nickname Mother Hen. So, uh, I think this is a cool mech. Like, I actually kind of like it. But, I think it definitely needs some fixing, or retconning in terms of some lower aspect. Yeah, I know retconning is, retconning sucks. It, it, it's just annoying, it's just suck. It, it just make it seem that it doesn't matter, you know? Like the overall story or overall lore that's the matter if you just keep right cutting stuff, so it's uh it's annoying but I, I think it's it's it, it's needed for the legionnaire. It, it's just small retcons, there's nothing too big. Especially like its image depiction and like compared to how it's described. In the images you you, you can clearly see it's hunched. Like, you know, the copy's in the middle and there's a gun on top of it. But if you in the diagrams, the uh, you know, the damage model like the head is located on the top and the gun is looking right towards them. So there's some like problems there. I think the Muse Fire look is supposed to be like the definite look, the definitive look. How it's supposed to look like how like the prototype, the 2X, uh, is supposed to look like. Because that one does have a head. So yeah, I think there needs to be some kind of image retconning here. To give us like definite look, which one is it? Is it this one? Or is it this one? I think this one is definitely 2F because the 2F has hunched, but the two uh, the, the prototype and the 2X and the other one, the two A's, the, the other two X's and the, the, the latest one. That 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 I think there needs to be some retconning to like uh, what do you call that? Fix them, I guess, to make sure we have a definite uh, version of them the version of it I guess. Also yeah they also need to put the no ejections like uh, quirk on the 2F as well since again that was specifically mentioned in the TRO page that the 2F cannot be ejected but you know, it doesn't have any it doesn't have that quirk. Also I think th this thing needs to be renamed like yeah <laughs> I think this is like an unpopular opinion or whatever but I think it needs to be renamed. You know, like real life legionaries, like they they were like heavy infantry. This thing is obviously not that. It's not meant for like heavy straight on fighting. I mean, yeah, I know mechs don't need to be like the same thing, the exact same thing that that they're gonna uh that, that they're named after. But I mean, I feel like you know, if you name it after a certain thing, like a very specific thing, like I personally expect to be somewhat similar. Like like for example, let's say a mech is called like the the gorilla. I think, uh, me personally, and I think most people would expect at least a heavy class mech. A gorilla, a, a gorilla, a, a light mech or gorilla, I don't think that makes sense, <laughs> that's, that's kind of weird. So yeah, I think, since it's like a skirmisher like mech, I think the the, the name Velite would be better since in the actual Roman Legion, like in real life, they, they were the skirmishers, the Velites were running around throwing pillays, th throwing javelins, and then running back, you know, just, just running around being a menace, really. That, and that's what this legionnaire mech is, well, that's not how it works. It runs around, it just shoots its minigun, and then just run, run around, it just runs around and shoots its minigun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, I think the name Velite, they should wreck on it to, the, its name to the Velite, if, and I think I stick the whole Roman convention thing, na naming thingy. I feel like they should use the name legionary for the legionary name for a new mech that's like at least a heavy, maybe assault, but at least a heavy mech. They sh I think they should like rename that. 
But yeah, aside from that, that's that. Uh, that's a legionnaire. Thanks for watching, everybody. I don't think this is video is as short as I think it's gonna be. I thought this was gonna be a short one, but I think it's gonna be a pretty long one. Not a long, you know, just normal, normal length video, I guess. But yeah, I got Twitch, you know, go and watch me, help me, support me there if you want to. <laughs> I got Discord if you want to chat, uh, chat with me when I'm off, I guess, whatever. Next time, as as doing a stream by Christopher, or Christian, sorry, I forgot your name. <laughs> Will be everybody's favorite walking trash can. The Ubi! Oh yes, we'll be the Ubi next time. Till then, till whenever I get working on that. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you guys. Unless you also watch my War Thunder videos, in which case, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, take care, and I'll see everybody then. See ya, bye-bye.